those of you who don't know me, my name's Michelle and I live on the Central Coast and I'm a team leader of the Lakes Legends and I have been doing Thermomix for over eight years and been a Thermomix before and I absolutely love it. I came on board with the Earn option, so I came on board to earn my Thermomix for free. Back then it was the TM31. And if you, were, if you told me eight years ago that I was still here, I would have said there is no way possible because I joined as a payment option. I had a um, five-month-old baby and a two-year-old and I soon discovered that I'd love getting out and meeting people and helping people with a Thermomix. So has everyone got a Thermomix that is on tonight? Just type in the chat. If you do, the model you have, and if you don't, we'd love to show you what it does. So tonight our class is all about saving money with the Thermomix. Um, so it's a budget busters class. And I think that is um, really helpful for this environment that we are in. You know, your grocery bills are going up. There's lots of extra expenses. But we're going to show you today how the Thermomix actually puts money in your pocket. So hopefully um, this will help. And if you've got any specific questions or you want to know more about, a, um, about something that a presenter is speaking up about, please pop it in the chat or ask a question and we will be here to help you. So Kyra is actually going to kick off um, tonight. So I will spotlight Kyra and she can introduce herself and um, let you know what she's making. Hi, on, Kyra, you're muted, Jeff. Hi, good on me. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Here I am. Give me one second. No worries. We are live, so I that's forgot to actually bit. close my fridge, and you know what that means? That means it's gonna like bip away forever. So anyway, hi everyone. My name's Kyra. I'm part of the Lakes Legends, and have been working this business um, for almost nine years, um, and absolutely love it. But one of the biggest things that I've found with owning a Thermomix is just how you can create something extra special out of not much that you've got in your fridge or pantry. So what we're going to do is we're going to make one recipe, but we're going to turn it into scrolls and bread rolls all at the same time. So I'm going to use my favourite recipe for doing this, which is off the recipe community, and I've loaded it up onto my TM6 using the new Cookie Do 3.0. So I'm just going to go into my recipes and then go into created recipes and I've got it saved in here and it's called the bested, bestest bread rolls ever. So if you're looking for it, that's what you want to be using. If you don't want to use that and you want to um, just use a recipe of cookie dough, even the pizza or a uh, scroll, uh, sorry, the pizza dough recipe will work. Also, the basic bread roll mix will also work too. So I'm just going to start cooking because I want to show you what it looks a little bit like on the um, screen when you upload these Cookie Do 3.0 recipes because it does look a little bit different than what our normal recipe will look like. So the first thing is it's coming up with, it just says add your ingredients in order that they're written um, and then turn the speed to speed six for 10 seconds. So down here, we've actually got our um, measurements. So this is where it has all of our ingredients written. So I've just got to add those all um, in the way that they've got them placed there. So we're going to pop in our 310 grams of Luke water. Luke warm water, not Luke water. That's funny. We've got, <laughs> I'm just going to pop that in 310. So I'd love to know in the comments if you actually make um, make bread rolls yourself. I'm going to now pop in some yeast and I use this and keep it in my fridge or freezer. My scales are going crazy because I'm leaning on the bench funny tonight. Sorry, guys, if, you see, if you're noticing that, that is not normal. That's just me leaning on the bench. All right, now we're going to pop in a teaspoon of salt. And I like to use Himalayan salt. We're going to pop that in. It's got on here a teaspoon of sugar. So the teaspoon's about five grams if you want to use the scales. Um, we're going to pop in our baker's flour. So to be honest, it says here five, 10, 10, but I always like to go at least 10% over because that way it, it um, cleans the bowl for me pretty much as it's needing. 
So I'm going to pop the 510, uh, 550, 560 in. In fact, I'll just throw that in. Beautiful. And we're going to pop in our olive oil. So 30 grams of olive oil. And so this is just this recipe, but this is what changes it up for you. So this is actually bread improver. You find that next to your yeast in your supermarket. Um, so you can also buy a, um, what's it called? A like a preservative free natural um, bread improver, um, but you have to buy that online. So that's all my ingredients. And now it's telling me that I need to turn that to speed six for 10 seconds. So that's when I go onto the little blade here. Obviously, I need to put my lid on. Set it for 10 seconds on speed six, and that's just going to mix it up for us. All right, while that's done, you can, you know, start packing up all the bits and pieces. I'll show you what that looks like. Because now we're going to need it for um, a minute and a half. So if I just go onto the cross again, again, that's that's that done. And we've got a little arrow here. So we just press on that. And it's telling me to now knead it for a minute and a half on dough mode. So all I need to do is to go into there and across the top it says mode. So we go into our dough mode. Oop, not our pre-clean. We don't want that right now. Go back. Sorry. Um, where are we? I'm looking at it. Dough mode, there we go. And we just set the time for a minute and a half. But I don't know how quickly you want me to go, Michelle, but I've already got this all done now and it's proved. Awesome. Yep. Keep going. Keep going? All right. Have you priced out how much the dough cost you to make? Oh, it's, it's, it's like not even $2 to make this. I haven't actually worked it out and I can if you want to um, do that during the night, I can actually work it out for you, but it'll be less than $2. For both and this, batches, the scrolls and the bread rolls. So it's gonna make me six bread rolls and six scrolls. Now, it's, it's like, so even with the um, extra like bits and pieces on it with the sauce and the cheese and the bacon that I'm gonna put on there, it wouldn't even cost $3.60. Like, do you know what I mean? Like that's like a, the price of the scroll itself. And we'll have bread rolls for the family and scrolls for the family tomorrow. Awesome. Did you want to just stop the um, kneading so we can hear you and then um, you can just knead it and then we can come back to show how it's kneaded, if that makes sense? Because you Yeah, no, that's it. fine. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. So get in and show us how we make the brew. And then okay. We'll so you want me to go with the one that I've pre-made? Yes, if you don't yes. mind. And then you can need it when um, the Des is so, presenting. Because it's a colder day, I put it on. If you've got a TM6, I'll show you. I actually pop it in my Thermomat into my Varoma base and I pop the lid on it. But as you can see, it's blown right out. And I pop it on my fermentation mode for it to prove. Now, the reason why I do that is because the weather's so cold at the moment that it's taking ages for our, um, our dough to prove and to rise. And I want to get a really successful loaf. And when I say that, I mean light and fluffy. So the kids love it and they think it's store-bought because seriously, if it's like a rock, they're not going to like us, are they? So <laughs> it's really all about the proving. So what I'm going to do now is just quickly roll this out. I'll grab my rolling pin. Hopefully you can see it. Let me just bring my camera back. Hopefully that will stay. It didn't. <laughs> Let me bring it down a bit. That'll work. That'll work. It will stay now. Oh, my gosh. All righty. Let me get my rolling pin. In fact, I think I left it somewhere. That's all right. I'm going to use my hands because I'm a capable person <laughs> and we're going to roll with, roll with the punches. So I'm just getting the air out of this, out of this 
loaf and I'll just roughly chop it in half and put half aside. Can you see that? All right, good. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna do is chop this into three and you'll see I'm using this bowl scraper. I find it really good to get my, get through the dough. You can also use your spatula, but I just find this to be a little bit more um, easier to use. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make these into my individual bread rolls. And I pull all the air out of it by just pinching the edge and rolling it in. And then we've got one little roll there. I'll do it again. All right. So you get that really nice top on them. And then the bottom, you know, um, it reminds me of like when there was a Vietnamese rest, uh, bakery in town years and years and years ago. And all the bottom, bottoms of the rolls used to look like that because they used to pinch them in like so. So you can also do like things like make them into ovals. So if you want to do them into like dinner rolls, give them a bit of a roll so that they go into a bit of an oval shape rather than, or if you roll it into a snake, you can actually make it into a knot roll. I'll do another one of those. So just give it a roll. Just like so. Does that make sense? I'll make one of these into a, so we've got two bread, two rounds, two ovals and two knots. So I'll pop them aside for now. And I'm gonna let these, I usually would let these prove again. So I'll let them prove while you're, now I'm just gonna roll this out a little bit without a, rolling pin, but that's still okay. It's still going to work fine. And I like to use my long handed spatula for this. I'm just going to put a scoop of the um, tomato paste on it. You could make your own, but to be honest, my kids are barbecue meat lovers boys, so they don't mind a little bit of barbecue sauce and tomato paste. And I'm just going to Slather that on using my spatula. I probably put a bit too much on. I'll just scrape a little bit off. We don't want them to be too saucy. Okay, and just going to pop on a bit of oregano. Just a bit of dried oregano. And I've got some cheese and ham. So I grated this cheese up in the Thermomix, so six seconds on speed six. And I had it all in two centimetre, three centimetre cubes. So it's a bit of mozzarella, a bit of cheddar thrown in. Now we'll just throw some bacon, some diced bacon over the top. Hey, Kyra, do you want to tell them what um, fun thing is going to be released over the next few months or next year? We don't know when. Uh, are you talking about coming? that incredible attachment where we're going to be able to slice and dice? Yes. <laughs> it's very exciting. I don't know what the name of it's called, but I just can't wait to get my hands on it. And I'm sure there'll be lots of customers that feel exactly the same way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to roll this up just like so. Do -do -do. Sorry, it's a bit messy and I'm trying to do a reasonably fast job of this. And then the piste de resistance or however you say it, is that you use dental floss to chop it. So I just wrap it around my fingers, go in underneath and then bring them together and it slices it up really nice and neatly. How's that? So we'll go again, use a dental floss to go underneath. Oops. It's just going to play out just because I'm on camera now. 
and you just cross it over at the top and you've got a nice straight through cut. I sometimes use fishing line as well, Farah. Yeah, fishing line's a good one as well. Absolutely. Mm. But I I've also I just have dental floss in the yeah. in the house. <laughs> oh, it's fishing so much easier line. than a knife. Fish, absolutely. And you get that better edge. Yeah. And you can use it on your thermomat, which you can't do. You can't use knives on your no. thermomats. So <laughs> that's, this is the best way to do it. So there's three, four. There we go. Well, your house now, what I would do is normally let these prove again so that they rise nice and neatly. So I'll put them on a tray super close together. And let them let them prove again before putting it in the oven, in a hot oven for about 20 minutes, and then they're done. So honestly, for less than what a loaf of bread, <laughs> you could get six scrolls and six bread rolls. Seriously, it's crazy. Love it. What else can you do with the um, that dough? <clears throat> Mini pizzas, um, all sorts of things. I can't eat with loads. I'm just trying to think of what else I've done with it. Focaccia, make focaccia out of it. It's just a really easy thing to do, like to make your own bread. I just, it, it's crazy, crazy good. As long as you know the little tips about using the bread improver, making sure that you allow it to prove that second time so you're getting a lighter, fluffier um, bread, whatever you're using. Um, I think that's probably the best tips I can, I can share with you. Awesome. Love it, Kyra. So if you can think of something that you use um, scroll dough or pizza dough for, pop it in the chat so we all can help each other. Another one is pizza pockets if your kids like to oh, yeah. make them full as well. Um, really versatile recipe for lunch boxes, that's for sure. And you can freeze them. Like it's not, yeah, you can, you can freeze them either as they are now or you could cook them and then freeze them and pull them out. The important thing is if you freeze them uncooked, they need to come back up to room temperature before you um, before you cook them in the oven. Otherwise, they're going to be hard as rocks again. 100%. And another thing I do, Kyra, too, because I make scrolls all the time for my kids, is um, I actually cut the dough in half and make half the scrolls and freeze half the dough. So we've got getting freshly baked scrolls every time. So really versatile. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, it's a huge, it's a game changer when it comes to lunch boxes. And what have you ever made um, bread without a thermomix or before you had your thermomix? <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> put your hand up or put in the comments if that's you as well. I know that was me. I couldn't be bothered making bread. It was all too hard. But with the thermomix, it's so easy. So thanks so much, Kyra. And we'll You're welcome. Over, we'll jump over to the Des now. She's got a brilliant um, takeaway meal that she's going to make for us. Hey, the days, how are you? Good, thanks, Michelle. So I was very much like Kyra. Before I had the Thermomix, I never made bread in my whole life ever. But yeah, we now we make them a lot at home. And I think making your own bread at home is like really good in terms of like saving and also like with the flavor because when you get like freshly baked bread, it's really just um, the best in the Thermomix. And yeah, so um, tonight I'm making a Thai green chicken curry. Um, so I have um, pre-made um, the curry paste and um, the recipe is actually um, skinny mixers. So before I had the TM6, we used to order a lot of takeaways and it actually costs um, a lot because it adds up like even if you just do it like once or twice a week and um so yeah because of the thermomix and you just have all these different options and it's just so easy and convenient to like make your own meals at home it's um actually reduced our takeaways because now we mostly just um home cook our meals so yeah all right so we'll get started with the thai green um chicken curry so first, we, we'll have to, I'll just want to show you, um, this is the um, green curry paste that I have um, made earlier. I'm gonna show you a video um, later on, 
but I froze this um, into like single portion serves and you can just like take one for when you need to cook it. And it's just so easy because you've pre-made um, the, the paste. So this one for one portion goes into the bowl with um, a 270 ml can of um, coconut cream. So I'm using the same um, spatula like um, Caracas. Um, yeah, this one's really good with getting through like tight corners because it's like slim and flexible. So um, cream and then we need um, lemongrass, just the white um, part only. I bruised it a bit so it really says um, the, the smell, the aroma and the flavor and kaffir lime leaves. Yep, and then we're gonna have to cook that for 10 minutes. 100 degrees Celsius. Speed one. So Jess, can you just explain how you're cooking? It's a little bit different to how Kyra was cooking. You're reading a recipe. Did you just want to explain yeah. to the people who don't own a Thermomix the different ways that we can cook? Yeah, so I'm kind of doing like a manual freestyle kind of cooking. So when um you're doing um when you're doing it manually, you can just like put in um the three different settings. So you have um, the time setting, the temperature setting, and the speed setting. So depending on um, what setting you put, it's actually um, a different function of Thermomix that you'll get. So the faster you set the speed, then um, you can get like milling or grating cheese. And then if you put like temperature, you're going to do some cooking or not. So yeah. So with the manual, you just, a lot of recipes, they have already like the setting for time, speed and temperature. And then you just um, put in, in your settings, what the recipe needs. So I'm just gonna do this for um, 10 minutes, 100 degrees Celsius and speed one. And while it's doing that, I'll maybe just, try to show you the video of how I made the um, curry paste. Beautiful. And also I'm just going to marinate the chicken now with um, some soy sauce and fish sauce. So I'll put that, I'll start this one and share the video. And how much chicken are you using there for Jez? Um, 500 grams, but I think with this one, you can actually increase um, the chicken as long as it doesn't go over um, the limit because it creates a lot of um, sauce yeah. also. Yeah. And did you use breast or thigh there? Um, the recipe actually calls for breast, but I we like to use um, thigh better. And I think it looks better um, in the Thermomix as well because sometimes I feel like if I use shredded chicken, no, um, chicken breast. Sometimes it gets um, shredded depending on how um, thick or thin you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think with Thai, usually it's um, it's safer. And we also like the flavor of the Thai, the thai as yes, well. Yes, definitely. It's a tougher bit of meat and the breast sort of is softer so it melts as you're cooking it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Great tips there for Des. Well, are you right to share your screen? Yeah, so I'll try to share, um, hang on one second. See if I can find it again. All right. So um, the video is a bit, actually a bit, the sounds a bit low, slow. Uh, how do I close this one? That's okay. You can just buy it and we can watch. Sorry. 
Chat share again. Let me go back to Zoom. Here we go. Do I have to be on? Hello, everyone. Kamusta po? Um, I'm going to show you how to make the green curry paste from scratch and you'll um, see that it's really easy to do with a thermomix and it actually tastes so much better when you make it from fresh ingredients compared to um, buying the jar paste from the supermarkets and you don't get the added um, preservatives or additives that comes with ready-made um, jar sauces and this recipe is um, by skinny mixers and you can get it uh, for free from their website and um, this one recipe is actually a lot you can um, make i think um, this makes enough for four um, curries so i'm also going to be showing you later how you can store this one in your freezer um, so you can use it um, during midweek or when you're making dinner or lunch in a hurry um, yeah so um, yes uh, let's get let's get started all right so first we need to toast um, this coriander and cumin seed so this one's the coriander and this one is the cumin seeds with um so we'll just put that in our um, thermomix bowl and we also have this shrimp paste um, or roasted i'm using the roasted bilachan and i i got this one i can't remember i think woolworths but they have this in coles or woolies from where i'm at and the good thing about this one is it's actually portioned into small sachets like this so you can just open um small portion rather than opening like the big one um, that i used to have before so in this recipe i just use half of that sachet i'll just pop it there in the thermomix and we're going to roast, toast it for um five minutes 100 degrees speed one so five minutes speed one. Um, if you're vegetarian or you're not very keen on using the shrimp paste you can take it out but I highly recommend um, actually putting it in because it adds a very distinctive taste and it just tastes so good um, according to my opinion with the shrimp paste so while that is going I'll show you um, the rest of the ingredients that we would be needing so starting from here we need the coconut oil or you can use any oil that you prefer we have coriander shallots um, long green chilies i'm using about seven and lemongrass two stalks and you need um, to use the white part only we have um, pepper we have salt um, garlic we have kaffir lime leaves and i'm using galangal galangal or um ginger if you can't find this so it's actually very similar to ginger let me just show you the difference so galangal um, is red so this is galangal or in filipino in my dialect we call it langkawas and this one is ginger so they have very they look very different and there's actually a big difference in um, the flavor and the smell as well so if you can get um, galangal, I recommend um, to use it for this recipe, otherwise just substitute it with the ginger. So while um, it's roasting, I'll just prep all these ingredients that's ready to go into the next step.
after it's been roasted, we're going to just add the rest of the ingredients. So we have um, the green chilies. I have visited half of it because it might be too hot. If you put all the chilies, um, garlic, half your ingredients, shallots, and then lemongrass and coriander leaves, stalks, and roots. Put everything. All right, and then the salt and pepper. And we're also going to pull it and just open the scale. Oh, I'm not sure. 80 grams of coconut oil for any oil that you like. So let me go. Yeah. All right, so up there, and we're just going to blend that for, let me see, 15 seconds, speed 9. So 15, speed 9. Smells good. Look at that. Let me see here. No, it's blurry. Yeah, so in there, we are going to add 20 grams of water and blend for 20 seconds, speed six. All right, hang on. I'll just get some water. Add 20 grams of water. Yep, and then blend for. Second speed six. All right, so I forgot to put my galangal. Oh no! So <laughs> we'll just have to do redo to redo the earlier step of just blitzing the rest of the ingredients. There it goes. No worries. We'll just do it again for speed nine. All right. So that's looking good. It's incorporated the galangal that we forgot. Oopsies. And. Yeah, we'll just have to do it a couple more times. Um, blending for 20 seconds, speed six. So this um, recipe, this whole recipe, is actually enough to make four curries. And as I've mentioned earlier, you can freeze it and then just use it whenever um, you need to cook the curry. So I have here, um, this is my silicone silic, silicone cupcake molds that I got from Ikea and I'm going to portion my paste here so I would know when it's frozen and I'll put it in the freezer and then when it's frozen I'm gonna pop them out and put them in a ziploc bag or you can also use um, this yogurt containers or any small containers that you have this in here put it in the oven oh sorry put it in the freezer cover I'll cover it with cling wrap and then that's it you have your skinny mixers Thai green chicken curry all right bye bye you're on mute Fides there you go much better so the green curry and the coconut cream has cooked a bit i've put in the butterfly because now we're going to put the chicken that we marinated for a bit a little bit of um, coconut sugar raw sugar brown sugar whatever sugar you have and another tin of um, the coconut cream. But I'm using the coconut milk. So I've actually used one can coconut cream, 
one can of coconut milk because um, I feel like when you put too much cream, it can be a bit rich. So yeah, it depends on um, how you like it. So you can adjust as well. But Dennis, I love how you have made four of those little containers of curry paste. And yeah. I know when I, before a Thermomix, I would go to the international section in Woolies or Coles and they, one jar that would make one would probably cost me what, $5, if not more. Yeah. So how much has this cost you, not the chicken, but how much do you think the paste itself has cost you to make? I haven't, I haven't really cost this. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, I don't think it's um, a lot because it's just a lot of like lemongrass. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you're I, definitely saving money by making it yourself. I don't think anything in there is like that expensive compared to like buying the jar and you don't have to walk to the supermarket or try yeah. and you have those four um portion curries that's ready for you um to use whenever. Yeah. But it tastes so much better too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um so I've added um yeah coconut milk chicken and sugar and we're going to cook it again for 13 minutes 13 minutes um 90 degrees slowest speed and it needs to be um reversed because we've now added the chicken and we don't want the blades to touch the sharp side of the blades to touch the chicken and shred it so i'm going to do that now and it's going to cook for 13 minutes so maybe someone can yeah. um, Beautiful. Just a couple of questions for you. Just throw that on and start cooking. Um, that, what did you say it was called? Gangle. What did you say that ginger Galangal. thing? Galangal is like, um, yeah, it looks like ginger, but it's red. So did you grow that in your garden or where can we um, buy that from? Um, no, um, I'm not. I try to make my own, uh, grow my own herbs, but they don't. <laughs> really um yeah so um that one i got from the asian shops because there's asian shops from where um we're at yep. um, i haven't i'm not sure if i've seen it before in coles or woolies but usually you can get it like um asian vegetable shops yeah beautiful and you said earlier that this would have been something that you would have purchased before you had your thermomix as in a takeaway meal how much do you think you would have spent on feeding your family a green Thai curry compared to making it yourself? Yeah, so like from where we are, I think one order of green curry probably costs like $18, but it's not enough. Like when you buy that single um, order, it's not enough. My family's like five. And when we go takeaways, they're not just gonna order the curry, they're gonna order something else. But if I just give them like um, this one with a lot of meat, then they'll have the option to have more of it. So yeah, that, that saves quite a bit. Yeah, definitely. So you would have bought two of those containers for about $40 and yeah. you used what, half a kilo of chicken, did you say? So, yeah. so this one I've used maybe like 600, 700 grams of yeah. So beautiful. Um, so say seven dollars, um, eight dollars worth of chicken. So a lot cheaper than getting your takeaway meal. Yes, and they can bring the leftovers to lunch um, the next day or Lovely. my lunch next day. So yeah, love it. Thanks for this. I'll flick over now to Laura, who is going to be showing us a wonderful cost saver, and that is a lunchbox snacks. How much do you spend on feeding your children lunchbox snacks? It, it can be quite expensive. So I can't wait to hear Laura's tips and tricks. It can. And I have four children at school. So I am always looking at ways to save money in um, sending things in their lunchboxes. So today I'm going to show you how to make um, LCM bars. So, um, and I'll, I'll just get it started and I'll tell you more as it's going. So I'm going to be using created recipes today. So I'll show you how that looks on the Thermomix. So here on my, here is my home screen. If I go into my menu, 
I can go into my recipes and go into a created recipe. This recipe is too simple to be on Cookie Doo. Cookie Doo has um, like amazing recipes that I use a lot of, but this is one that I've entered myself. So um, you can see the picture of my daughter with our homemade LCM bars there. And I'll just press start cooking and then we go. So in created recipes, the guided cooking is, looks a little bit different to the normal guided cooking, but it's still super easy to follow. I actually really like the way of following this. So when you when it's time to enter your ingredients, you press the scales button down below and it brings up everything that you need to enter right at this moment in this step. So I'm putting in my butter, which is hopefully the right amount because I was trying to be organized. That'll do. And then I press tear to add my next ingredient, which is my sugar oh no actually sorry i didn't have that ready can you just get me sugar i'm going to add my honey because i wasn't ready with my sugar so that's okay and when i when i'm asking my helper to get me sugar what i mean is i buy everything in bulk so i have a 20 kilo bag of sugar and i just needed to um update my my little container. <laughs> so now I'll add in my sugar. So Laura, is this a recipe on recipe community that you found? No, 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 it's not. This is a random, like a traditional LCM recipe that I've converted on the Thermomix. Excellent. So are we able to um, email this recipe out to everybody? Yeah, I'll put it in the email tomorrow when we send out the post-class email. Beautiful. Um, Thanks, Laura. Yeah. So that's my raw sugar. And then all you need to do is press the X and we're going to press the blade picture now to go into our method. So, sorry, lid goes on. <laughs> And we're going to speak to Now, because I like to multitask, I'm going to turn that lower while I'm trying to talk to you. Because I like to multitask, um, I'm going to get the next steps ready while that's all melting. So to do that, I am going to um, press the cross to get out of that step. And I'm going to arrow across to the next step. Now this step is getting my next ingredients ready. So I'm putting a bowl on top. And I'm going to add my rice puffs. And I just buy the cheap brand. This is $2 a box. And I'm going to use about half of it. So it's about a dollar's worth of rice puffs. And I realize that I'm blocking the hole here. I don't know if for some of you are looking this, I'm blocking the hole, but it's only going to be so quick. And my ingredients in the Thermomix are right down here. So it's okay at the moment. And they wouldn't have reached a high temperature yet either. No, no, it's, it's still all good. And then I'm putting in some coconut and some sunflower seeds. So that's it. Now, the recipe says optional. This is my thing. I normally add some dried cranberries as well. That's not in normal LCM bars. So I'm not doing that today because I want to show you more of a normal LCM bar recipe. And if you wanted them to be chocolate, you could add some cocoa in there as well. So just mix all that together. You can't see what I'm doing, but that's pretty boring. I'm just mixing while my ingredients in here melt. So I had a look on the Woolworths website this morning to find out how much LCM bars actually cost. And it was to get the bulk pack, because that's what I would get. I wouldn't buy the little pack. The bulk pack that has 15 bars in it was $9.50. So this recipe that I make makes a really big tin. I get 24 bars out of it because I do three rows of eight. And Butter's a bit expensive at the moment. So there's a dollar's worth of butter in there and a dollar's worth of rice puffs. But everything else is like 
you know, a handful of coconut. And I put the sunflower seeds in because I'm always trying to add nutrients in where I can to my kids. But if you were trying to save money, you wouldn't you probably bother with the sunflower seeds. That's just my thing. Um, and then the other thing that could cost money is the vanilla paste that's going in there as well. Um, my vanilla paste is homemade. I buy vanilla beans off eBay and I follow the cookie dough recipe for um, vanilla paste. So it saves me a lot of money and it's just beautiful. It's amazing. My kids, I have to hide it in the back of the fridge or I catch them eating it. It's so good. Um, so yeah, that's going in. And so um, the cost of these 24 bars of LCMs is roughly around $3. Um, so if I was buying that at the store, it would be maybe more like $15 because it was $9.50 for 15 bars. So saving a lot of money. And that's just one option of lunchbox snacks. So obviously you could be making muesli bars, biscuits, cookies, muffins. We like the cheese puffs. Um, the scrolls Kara was showing you earlier, we do that um, as well. My kids take a scroll for lunch each day and then with some cut up veggies to go with their um, morning tea, it's quite a cheap way of filling their lunch boxes. So yeah, we save a lot of money by using the Thermomix and I just wouldn't bother <laughs> without the Thermomix making all these things because it makes it so easy. You know, I'm not having to do anything on the stove or um, get out a food processor or a mix master or whatever else you need to be getting out. Um, you know, making muesli bars and all these things is just so easy in the Thermomix. So anyway, I'm going to add in the vanilla now just through the hole in the top of the lid because you want to add it towards the end of the melting stage. <laughs> So just about a teaspoon of vanilla. Um, it really does taste so good. And that, um, that's that mix. So get rid of that. The next step is to combine it all. So I am going to pour it in here. And then um, press it into my tin. So super easy. My kids often can get involved in doing this. So um, it doesn't even have to be me doing it because it's just so easy, safe for them to be using. I wouldn't let the seven-year-old near the stove, but I let him use the thermo mix. It's so safe um, and easy for him to make his own thing. He does... My kids, my me and my 10 year old is the main one who does a lot of baking, but the other kids do as well. I'm gonna make sure I get all that out using the thermo spatula. So it's done a pretty good job. And then it's just combining. So on top, this is just a basic LCM recipe, obviously, as I said, on top, you could add sprinkles, you could drizzle melted chocolate over it. You could add chopped chips like I have in my the picture that I had on my screen. Um, as I said, I usually add dried cranberries just for a little bit of sweetness, but they're good just the way they are. And if you, just a note, if you thought you could add the chopped chips right now, you can't, that would just all melt and mix in and you'll have chocolate flavored LCM. So if that's what you're going for, good. But if you want them to be whole chopped chips, you, need, you really need to press it in your tin and then put the chopped chips in on, on top so they don't melt in. So that's a tip I learned the hard way, which didn't matter because happy accidents make chopped chip flavored things. Um, yeah, that's, that's really it from me. I mean, you're welcome to keep watching me do this, but if someone else is ready. Lovely. Thanks so much, Laura. Yeah, no that problem. sounds like a great cost saver, and I can't wait to grab your recipe to give that a go. I think my yeah, it's really that. so easy. <laughs> so you said three, did you say three dollars for 24 versus I've, um nine dollars for only 15? Right. That's yeah. a pretty nine great 15. saving. Yeah. It's a great craving. And that's just one example, you know. There's so yeah. many other things you can make for your kids. 
chocolate chip cookies or Anzac biscuit. Anzac slice actually is a really good, easy recipe on Cookie Doo. If you want a good lunchbox snack, Anzac slice is great. Yeah. Do you yeah. know, Laura, I've got one of my customers. She used to spend $50 a week on lunchbox snacks and with her Thermomix now spends $50 a month. So that's a huge saving just there. That's awesome, isn't it? Yeah. That's, that's what you want to hear. Definitely. Yeah. Saving so, with the Thermomix. No worries. So I'm going to just show you something that I have pre-made. Mm -hmm. So what to say, now I'm just putting it in the fridge. That's it. Yeah, and when will that be set, Laura? Overnight or how long does it take? Yeah, I've only ever done it overnight. Maybe a, maybe a few hours, maybe only one hour. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm just do it in the not. afternoon. It would be ready. Yeah, exactly. yeah, and is that easy to cut? Oh, so easy. Yeah, I just yeah. put it on. Uh, I take pull this out, mm -hmm. put it on a board, and um, I actually use my pizza cutter, but a big kitchen knife does a good job too. It's, it's cool. very easy to cut. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks, Laura. Thanks. So did you notice that Laura and Fidesz um, were using the basket, the simmering basket on top while they were cooking? You may have noticed um, your Thermomix has now got an update. And um, if you do use the new TM6 measuring cup, just to make sure that if you are cooking over 100 degrees, the recipes have been altered through Cookie Do, and then you just pop that simmering basket on top just for extra safety. So... Yogurt. This is liquid gold. When I got my Thermomix, as I said, I had a, um, a baby and a two-year-old. So we were going through yogurt like there was no tomorrow. I'd spend $18 a week on yogurt and I can now make the same amount for about 3 to $5 in my Thermomix. So these little cups are from the mix shop. They... Um, with the TM6, you actually cook this um, in the Varoma on the ferment fermentation mode and it's individually pot set yogurt so it is super thick oh shivers super thick and um i'll just scoop that out so you can see the thickness there so that there was just a bit of whey that was on top that is just drizzled out there but really thick and creamy and it's just uh, an aesthetic thing if i make this in um jars my kids can't get enough of it and a batch probably lasts me only a few days rather than doing it in a big container and then scooping it out, that doesn't interest them. But having it in these little individual cups, they'll eat that like no tomorrow. So you can make the um, yogurt in little snitchy pouches. You can um, get the host reward of the white thermo server and ferment it in the thermo server. Or as I say, we love the individual pot set jars. So that is a huge saving, you know, $3 a batch versus $9. Um, and Vicky's just said, oh, hi, Vicky, I didn't realise you were on. Vicky just said that she makes lactose-free yoghurt for her dogs. She has told me that before. And that is a huge saver for her. Um, how much did you say, how much were you telling me, Vicky, that the, um, you used to spend on your dog yoghurt? It was quite expensive. Just type it in the chat for me. So that is a saving just there. So do you guys want to hear something super, super exciting that, Kyra and Fidesz haven't even heard it. It's hot off the press and I wanted you guys to be the first to hear. When you purchase your TM6 um, starting tomorrow morning, we have got a new gift with purchase. So currently it is an over black thermo server and an Indian cookbook. Um, you've got the choice of that to the end of the month. Or you can select the next gift with purchase, which actually is, drum roll, I can see Kyra, she's like itching, jumping out of her skin, wanting to know what the next deal is. And for Des, look at them. Uh, it is a $75 gift voucher from the mix shop. So you can go shopping and purchase anything that you like from the mix shop. So if you um, prefer that gift with purchase, that is starting tomorrow. So how exciting is that? And the other thing that we have got as well, which is soon ending, is a half price business kit as well. So if you were interested in a side hustle, getting your Thermomix to earn you some extra money, whoever invited you on tonight, give them a, um, a, a little note and I'm sure they would absolutely love to help you and have a chat to you about um, what this business offers. Now just over to um, Kyra. She has actually um, worked out the costings on her um, loaves of bread 
and scrolls. How did you go? I'm Karen? pretty excited about this, Michelle, because yes. I haven't worked it out for a while. I haven't done the scrolls for a while. And I certainly haven't done like the mix of the two before. And to think that we actually do it, we, you know, the zip repayment is as low as $24.54 a week. How exciting it would be if I could share with my customers that they could save $24.51 a week. So it's three cents difference. What, just on that- scrolls and bread rolls? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's crazy. If you want to buy them at Baker's Delight, I yes. have to just put that out there. So what I worked out was, just so you know, because they don't have like a pizza scrolly thing that I could actually work out. So what I did was I worked out what the pizza scrolls cost me um, to make the six of them. It was $5 and seven. So that's for the dough, the half of the dough and for the topping. The whole batch of domain cost $2.49. Now, their current prices worked off Woolworths. It wasn't like going for the cheapest options. Um, so that was $2.49 for the dough mix, which includes everything, including the bread improver. And then the topping cost me $2.58, which worked out to be $5.07 for the six pizza scrolls. However, I worked it out on cheesy mite scrolls and they would cost four dollars 29 to make um the the six cheesy mite scrolls and the bread rolls does that make sense yep it does yeah all up for six scrolls and six pizza um six bread rolls um cost you five dollars seven for a pizza scrolls or veggie mite so uh, cheesy mite scrolls it's $4.29. But if I was to walk into Baker's Delight, the six scrolls alone would cost me $23.40. Wow. And to buy a, a scroll, a, a bread roll costs you 90 cents each. So that's another $5.40. So that's $28.80 to buy to to, to buy at Baker's Delight what I made for $5.07. Wow, for 12 things. That's ridiculous. Does that, um, that's, and I think, that's huge savings there. Just there alone. If you were to do that once um, once a week. <laughs> that's exactly right. And That's a lot got, of money over a month, over a year, over paying your Thermomix off. Then we've got Laura's LCM bars and then we've got the Dez's Bakeaway meal. So we've already it's, paid the Thermomix off and have got our money in our pocket. So Exactly. Um, so I was excited to share that, that I sat there and worked that out. So I'll yeah. watch the I'll watch the the actual um the rest of the cooking class in replay. Sorry yeah. girls. I just <laughs> I got joke. so excited I had to work it out. Yeah. And I think comparing um Baker's Delight, because a few of you will probably say, well, I wouldn't buy them from Baker's Delight. I think you're comparing the quality because we don't have those preservatives and Baker's Delight is not the cheap end of the market. It is a nice scroll. So you're comparing apples with apples. You're not comparing, you know, the real cheap and nasty bread that's a dollar because that's packed with heaps of preservatives. So I think you've done the right thing there. And I'm blown away because I haven't bought bread rolls and scrolls for eight years to think that it's gone up that much. When you said $24 or whatever you said, I thought, oh, what, is that for a whole week? Like a few batches. I didn't realise you meant one batch, Kyra. So who's gobsmacked about that? For those of you that have a thermo mix for, you know, whether it's a few months or a few years, you forget that how much people are paying for these sorts of things. Well, well, thanks so much, Kyra. That's actually really exciting. I'm going to jump over to Fidesz. Have you have you got them proof before I um, flick over? Did you just want to show everyone what's happening there? Um, yeah, so after oh, sorry for chicken... we'll just um Kyra can just show us her bread. And you're gonna bake them tonight or bake them in the morning. Okay, Kyra's muted, but she's saying she's gonna bake them tonight. Oh hold on, hold on. You you hold on. I'll unmute you. I oh, know I can't unmute you. You've got to unmute yourself, Kyra, sorry. I'll bake them tonight because we've got early starters in the morning. Yeah. I'm not going to get up at 4 a.m. to cook for them. Mm-hmm. And, they've, and they've doubled in size for that 20 minutes or so we've been sitting here. So that they look fantastic. Good job. Thanks, Kara. You're get welcome. You, I'll get you up um, for Des. There we go. 
Thanks so much. Yeah. So what I did like five minutes um, before is I've just added in all um, the vegetables and I've put um, red capsicum. It's about 200 grams um, as per the recipe, but you can actually add more. Um, so that's another way for you to bulk up the, the dish so you can get more. And what I've added, um, you can put any vegetables that you like, but what I've put in was red capsicum. I've added zucchini, um, broccolini, and snow peas. You can add eggplants. Um, what else can you add for the curry? You can add mushrooms. Uh, yeah, what else? Um, the recipe says you can add bamboo shoots, but I didn't have those, so I skipped that one. So this, this one just finished cooking. So for Des, anything that's really you've got in your vegetable crisper that's in season, yeah. you don't go out and buy these specific things, you just grab what you've got, is that right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so whatever you can, I think it will work well um, with the curry. Um, so this one's just finished. What I like about cooking vegetables in the Thermomix is it doesn't really overcook. I'm not sure if you can see it. So um, yeah, so there you go. You, you can't really overcook. It doesn't overcook the veggies. So if you want them like um, crispy, crunchy still, um, yeah, um, most of the recipes I found um, it's like that. So um, this one, just put it in your thermo server if you have them. This is my favorite, <laughs> the white one. So I'll just pop it there to keep it warm. Um, yeah, and then that's basically it. Um, you can add garnishing like um, Thai basil, or you can use just the regular sweet basil that you can find in the groceries. So I'm just gonna transfer that here and maybe just show you whatever um, is in here later. Michelle? Yeah, you're muted. <laughs> Smells good. Sorry, I'm just getting the links for the rose gold tray. So in the chat, I've posted all the recipes apart from the LCM bars and all the items that we've used in the mix shop. Um, so Laura, did you just want to um, have a chat about something while I just get the links in and then we'll just wrap it up if that's okay with you? We'll just totally fine. <laughs> Let no me worries. just find just myself. Pop yourself on um, hotline. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I know Michelle mentioned it earlier that we have a half price business kit um, available at the moment. I just wanted to expand on that to let you know, if for those of you who are maybe thinking, um, I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I could do what they're doing or, um, you know, or maybe you're thinking you could do it, but you need a confidence booster. When you join this business, all the training and mentoring is included free and there are personal development opportunities all along the way. So, um, the first step to finding out if you are interested is actually just having a chat um, with one of us, um, one of the team leaders, basically, so we can tell you what's involved. And then you can decide by making a really informed decision so you can get all the ins and outs. Um, so even if you aren't really sure, I think just like find out the info because maybe it'll be for you. I was working um, in a corporate position when I became a Thermomix consultant. I was a mom of two. And I wanted to earn a Thermomix because basically, although I just didn't want to pay for it. Um, that was 13 years ago. Basically, it was a lot of money for a kitchen appliance back then. It's it's more normal now. But back then I was like, I don't want to pay for that. But I think I could earn it with my time instead of, you know, instead of spending my money, I'll spend my time. And once I started, I it just snowballed and I was only meant to stay for two months and um that was a long time ago. And basically what I found was that I was enjoying it a lot and I love the Thermomix and I genuinely think everyone should see it. Whether they buy it or not is sort of irrelevant to me. I just want to show it to everyone. And I think everyone really should see what this could do for them. So that's why I love being a consultant. 
Um, fast forward now, I have four kids. I've quit my corporate job and I just do Thermomix because I love it. I love the flexibility of it, getting an income whilst being a stay-at-home mom. Um, we are rewarded like crazy. We get free gifts sent to us every month. The boxes just keep showing up and, um, you know, trips away and just fun, fun stuff. It's all fun. So um, I don't know. I just think you should look into it. Um, if you love your Thermomix or if you don't have one and you want to earn it, either way, I think you should just look into it and see what's involved because the situation of each consultant is different. Some people do a few hours a week. Some people do it more, like a lot more like myself because it's more my full-time income and there's people all in between. So, and some people do it virtual, like what we're doing tonight. Some people do it in person. Some people do a hybrid. It's like really suits all situations. So don't be shy to reach out to one of us because um, finding out the info is not um, locking you into anything. So, yeah. And Laura, before you uh, finish up, where are you, the few of you going next month? Yeah, so I said trips. Um, I feel like we've been going all around the world with Thermomix and next month we're going to Uluru. I'm so super excited because it's such a magical place and it's not the cheapest place to go in Australia. It's quite, you know, a luxury holiday and we're going five stars all the way and all the fancy trimmings along the way, um, completely free. Um, so, and that's something we have the opportunity to do every year is an awesome trip away, except for in COVID times. We're not going to talk about that anymore. <laughs> no, we've blocked that out of our memory. Yeah, we've blocked that out. <laughs> We're going away now. Um, sorry, I probably talked more than you wanted me to there, but I'm very, I just, yeah. No, you're passionate like all of us are that are on here. So thank you, Laura. Um, I normally do um, have a little poll that I ask you some questions, but I actually forgot to um, do that today. So if you were interested in hosting a cooking experience to unlock some of those host rewards that we spoke about tonight, um, interested in purchasing a Thermomix or um, getting some more information on joining the team, you can either pop it in the chat or reach out to your consultant, whoever invited you on tonight, and they would love to help you with whatever your next step is. Um, the <clears throat> goal on the mission for this um, class is to help and support all the Thermomix owners to get the most out of their machine and save as much money as they can during these tough times. And for those of you that don't own a Thermomix, our mission is to have a Thermomix in the heart of every kitchen. So hopefully we've inspired you to learn a little bit more about what the Thermomix can do for you. Does anyone want to come off mute or um, ask any questions or type anything in the chat before we um, finish up? I will send you, Laura and I will send you the recording from tonight and also um, the recipe links as well. I and hope I everybody enjoyed that. Yeah, and I think you should just, is Fidesz going to show us the end of her? Oh, yes. Sorry, Fidesz. Thing? And also, yes, NDIS approved, as someone um, just mentioned in the chat. The Thermomix is now NDIS approved. So very exciting. Uh, all right. So, okay. So this is the five. It doesn't look very nice with my lighting, but I have tasted it and it's really, really good. I think if um, you're needing some inspiration or anything to cook with your Thermomix, this is definitely something that you should try. Um, yeah, it's it's really good. I mean, it. I think it's even better than some of um, the ones that you can get from the shops. But yeah, yeah. So there you go. So that's my Thai green chicken curry. Lovely. Is that your yeah. dinner for tonight or for tomorrow night for this? Um, yes, my dinner for tonight and my lunch for tomorrow and the kids' lunch for tomorrow too. <laughs> love it. So she was working and cooking dinner at the same time. So multitasking. I love it for this. <laughs> well, thanks so much, guys. If um, nobody has got any questions, um, we'll wind it up. We've got lots of thank yous there. So um, it's been our absolute pleasure to showcase the Thermomix to you and what it can do for you. So thanks, guys.